Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. And welcome to today's video, which is going to be my June makeup roundup, where I'm sharing everything that I tried in the month of June, all of my up-to-date thoughts, all of my updates, the good, the bad, the ugly, the in-between and just letting you know how I feel about everything new to me that I tried in June. So without further ado, let's get started. I highly suggest a drink, maybe a snack, because I have so much to talk about today. It's going to be a big one. So don't say I didn't warn you. So we're starting off with skincare. First up, this moisturizer from Dr. Sam's. This is the Flawless Body Therapy, Dr. Sam Bunting Skincare. And this is an AHA body cream. So it's an exfoliating moisturizer, essentially. <laughs> hooked on this. I've tried a few of these types of products. This is my favorite, the best one I've tried by far. It also gives you a really good like instant result. Like I don't want to have to use something for like three months to make a difference. This literally, I the first time I tried this, I put this on my arms overnight. You know, you have like those bumps, rougher skin on your arms, especially when we're going into summer. I feel like the sun and the vitamin D really like helps our skin in the summer, but in winter it's all covered by jumpers the entire time. I get really bumpy arms and it's just not, doesn't feel silky soft. Literally the next morning I woke up, to silky, perfect arms. And yes, it does get better with time, but you do get that sort of instant gratification as well. This is the best bump removing, arm bump removing, smoothing, etc. moisturizer I've ever tried and I love it. I like that it's so huge as well. You get 200 mils. The one warning I'll give you is use a little. A little goes a long way. The first time I applied this, I was rubbing it in for about 45 minutes <laughs> before I could go to bed because I didn't know, I didn't get that memo. So you've been warned. A little goes a long way. Next up, let's talk about this Tatcha, the Deep Cleanse. Now, Tatcha sent me two of their cleanses. The rice one, which I loved, and this one, which I don't love. It's the first Tatcha product I've tried that I wasn't in love with. So I've played around with this. I mean, I've nearly used it up just because, you know, I don't love it. I'm not just gonna waste it, you know, it's expensive. My problem, my problem with this is that it leaves my face sticky. I don't know why. I've played around with it. I've tried using less. I've tried using more. I've tried, you know, just rinsing better afterwards, but I do that pretty well anyway. You know, I use a flannel to get all the residue off. I use my little Foreo device to cleanse my skin. So I don't think it's a me problem is what I'm saying. I don't know if you guys have tried this, but yeah, everything else, fine, scent nice, nice consistency and texture. It works nicely to cleanse my skin, but literally every time I use this, my skin feels sticky afterwards and I can't get rid of the stickiness. So I didn't love it and I'm really sorry, but I like the other one, Tatcha. <laughs> Please don't hate me forever. And lastly for the skincare category is this Kate Somerville Mega C 30% Vitamin C Brightening Facial. And again, this is another exfoliating product, but this time for the face. Now, let me tell you, I'm highly, highly glad that I read the instructions and the directions of this before I walloped it all over my face because the first time I used this, oh, it was intense, okay? This is a very potent, high level of vitamin C mask. It's very strong, it's hardcore. I wouldn't recommend this if you have sensitive skin, if you've ever reacted to sort of an AHA mask before, don't go near it. If like myself, you have the hide of a buffalo or a rhinoceros, then proceed with caution. So it says on the back, due to the high concentration of vitamin C, you may, experiencing, you may experience some tingling sensation. I would say it was more like itching. Like I felt like my, it wasn't burning, it was more like itching. It suggests to leave on for 20 minutes. I made it to about six or seven before I thought, get it off my face, it's too much, it's, it's driving me mad. And I thought I'm gonna remove it and be like a red burnt, 
crispy lobster but my skin looked great and felt great once I removed it there was no burning no irritation it was just while it was on there it was the tingling that they called it but to me it was itching so yeah and I, my skin felt amazing the second time I used it it took me a little while to be brave enough the second time I used it I didn't get the itching at all it felt very comfortable the second time so maybe I've just built up a bit of tolerance to it and it's so lovely my skin feels amazing afterwards you need a tiny amount I like that it's quite yellow so you can really see where it is I always get scared with these types of products that I've like missed a bit when I'm taking it off and that bit of my face is going to be like gone come the mo morning you know <laughs> come the morrow no face there I really like it very effective very strong like I said proceed with caution but if you have rhino skin like myself great we love it now typically i always have a fragrance of the month that i've purchased but this month i haven't purchased any full-size fragrances because i've been on a bit of a mission with my samples i was ordering a lot of samples this month and yeah just playing with them trying them out i went a bit mad i was buying fragrance samples willy-nilly like a mad woman now the first sample I believe I got in my Harrods gift bag and this is one umbrella for two. I never expect to like anything from those like gift bags but this scent is gorgeous. I, they, I mean they've got me, they've suckered me in with the free gifts because I will 100% be buying this at some point. This is a very nice fresh citrusy lovely for summer scent with a bit of sweetness i think this would be gorgeous for holiday gorgeous for this type of time of year and type of weather that we're having it's so beautiful the performance is fantastic it's very wearable very crowd pleasing got a bit of light and freshness but still that sort of juicy fruitiness that's very you know crowd pleasing nothing bad to say about it at all very pleasantly surprised it was never even on my radar but i really loved that one i would absolutely be purchasing a full bottle of that because it's just delightful so next up i ordered four samples from bdk you can do like little sets or you can just buy one or two so i chose four the reason for that is the reason for me initially wanting some samples was because they came up with a new fragrance vanilla leather that i was very interested in and there was a couple others from the house that I've always wanted to smell. Never kind of curious enough to purchase a full bottle as a blind buy. But while I was getting vanilla leather, I thought, let's try some others. So let's leave that one until last. So the others that I picked up are Rouge Smoking. Now this is beautiful. I like smoky scents. I wouldn't really say this is particularly smoky, it's mostly cherry that I get from this. Definitely a heavy cherry note in here. I really like the fragrance, but the performance was just really lacking on me. It really didn't last at all. It had no projection. So that was really disappointing and that just kind of counted it out regardless of how nice this, the fragrance actually was. The next one I picked up was Amber Saffrono. Now I really thought I would love this one just from the name, it's got amber and saffron in it, two of my all-time favourite notes. This is an absolute beast mode leather scent. That is all I can get from this fragrance. It drowns everything else out. I like a leather note in a lot of my fragrances, but it's so dominating and it's so pungent, so potent. It was just very, very masculine to me and just too, too thick, too heavy and just too powerful of a leather note for me and my preference. So it just really wasn't what I was expecting. Then we had Celle d'Argent, which was another one I was really interested in because I've been wanting and looking for like a salty aquatic fragrance. That's kind of something I'm like, I'm missing a little bit in my collection. So I wanted to try this because I've been reading the reviews that it is very salty, fresh, aquatic, sounds great. And it is, I do like it. It's not a full bottle for me, and I'll tell you why. It is everything that people say. It's very aquatic. It's got that really salty, fresh quality to it. Unfortunately on me, you know how fragrance goes. It does different things depending on your individual skin chemistry. This one on me, unfortunately, has a very noticeable urinary note in it. Mm. 
I haven't seen anyone else mention this in the review, so don't be like completely put off by that because it seems like it's just me and my skin chemistry for whatever reason. It's there almost straight away and it stays throughout the journey of the scent and I can just get this, this like occasional whiff of what smells like urine. <laughs> so that was a pass. And finally, vanilla leather. As you can probably see, I've used almost this entire sample and how big was it? I don't know. I'm not sure, but it was a decent sample. I've probably been using it for like a week, trying to make my mind up, which I don't know that I still have. The issue I'm having with this is I love the fragrance. It's beautiful. Vanilla leather and a beautiful leather note, very creamy beautifully sort of ambery and warm but in a lighter way that's appropriate you know all year round very versatile comforting gorgeous bit of sweetness in there i love everything about the fragrance and i'm confused because i'm reading a lot of reviews saying that the performance is great the sillage the longevity i cannot smell this on myself it doesn't like smell on me i can't i can you know spray it on my wrist and smell that it's there if i spray it on myself you know as i would any fragrance on my neck on my pulse points it's gone it's it's evaporated within a few minutes i didn't even get a single comment from my husband my children who always compliment me on my fragrance especially if there's a new one they haven't smelled before nobody has said anything about this any of the times i've worn it so i know they can't smell it and that's really sad, but I'm seeing everyone else say it's, you know, a performance bomb. So I'm confused. The only thing is, is that I have experienced before that when you buy samples like this, the sprayers of these samples are not good. They're not great. That's what I will say. Some of the, you know, these are not all the same, these little samples. Some of them have a great spray. These don't. And so I'm having to spray a lot over spray as per the number of sprays and I think that may be the issue so I may still buy a full bottle of that and see how it actually performs with the proper bottle and sprayer because I, I hope that's what's happening but uh, I'm just not getting the performance out of it that I wish I was. Okay so moving on to the makeups let's talk about the Le Mer Soft Fluid Foundation. So I asked you guys on my Instagram what's the foundation that you think I haven't tried before that I would love, that you think I would love, that you think I need to try, that's already existing, doesn't have to be new because we're really lacking new foundations. I've really wanted to try a new foundation. The last few I've tried have just been like, hmm, the Mario, the Say Beauty, I just haven't loved any of them. and I'm, I'm bored, I want to try a new amazing foundation. So literally every single one of you who answered that question pretty much gave a different answer. I have like, 25, 30 answers to that question on my Instagram stories and every single one was different. I think I had like two foundations that had two votes. Every other one was something different. A lot of them were foundations I have already tried. So the one that sort of piqued my interest was the Le Mer. If this was your suggestion, thank you so much. You're the winner. Um, because I have actually tried this before years ago and only as a sample and only while I was on a holiday. So it really didn't get any kind of attention paid to it. You know, I didn't really probably wasn't using it with a primer for a start. I was only using it on holiday in the evenings. And so I never really got my thoughts together on it. And it is one that I know is very, very popular. So I wanted to give it another go. I was very curious on home soil, how I would get on with this one. So I have the shade tan. This is the foundation I'm wearing today. It's early days. I've only tried it a couple of times so far, but I'm loving it, okay? I'm absolutely loving it. It's very natural. It's very light and thin in texture. It's got all the things I like. It's a medium coverage. It seems to wear really nicely on me. It's very flattering on lines and texture and all that good stuff. The shade, I made a mistake in the shade that I first ordered. So I had to order a second one. I think their warm tones are warm and I'm an anomaly. I'm a weirdo when it comes to my undertone. It's tricky to match it. So yeah, the warm tones, if you have a skin tone similar to mine, if you're olive, go for the neutrals. They are better for us than the warm tones, which are far too warm for me. So I went with a neutral shade tan and yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Very, very natural and very easy going. And I just, it's got luminosity to the finish, but it's not like an overwhelming level of luminosity. It's not dewy. It's a beautiful skin-like 
glow, which I'm really enjoying. I will give you more thoughts as we get to know each other a little more, but so far, so good. Next up, I tried the Ciate bronzers in my trying new makeup video. Again, the bronzer I have on today, this is the shade South Beach and I'm really liking it. It's a really nice natural matte. I have that, has that lovely reddish undertone that I really like in my summer bronzers. I've really liked this packaging and the fragrance, a real big surprise hit for me. I haven't tried a lot from Ciate, but what I have tried, I've really enjoyed. So another win. It's very natural, but buildable. So you can start off with a really natural little light bit of bronze and just build up for as much or as little as you want. I found the undertones of it just perfect for what I like for a bronzer. Next up, I was sent in PR this month, this little collection from NARS. This is their Laguna collection. I'm wearing the Laguna, so we have Laguna and Laguna Sunset little eye quads. I'm wearing this one Laguna on my eyes today and it's so pretty. It's the perfect little summery quad. It's basically going to give you like a ombre bronzy look. Is it super groundbreaking and exciting and a colour story we've never seen before? Of course not, but perfect for travel. I really got on very nicely with it. I was really happy with the look that I came up with today and it's very pretty. Ideal for holiday makeup, travel makeup. Really, really pretty palette. No problems with the performance. The matte, there's like one matte in here and then a couple of satins and a shimmer. And the matte is really nice, really buildable, but sort of light and subtle. And then everything else just complements each other beautifully and works together really beautifully. Really no to little fallout from any of the shadows. They wear nicely and they're very, very pretty. Like I said, it's not gonna be like insanely different to anything that you've already got, but it is a nice travel friendly option at a nice price point, especially if you're looking for something that you can travel with easily or store easily, cause it's a little dilly little thing. And then we've got, boop, this one, which is like a little palette of pops. This is Laguna Sunset. And this just gives you the option to like funk things up. These shadows are a little more sort of impactful as far as the shimmer, super pretty, again, perfect summer colors. I have used this one, but I, I needed like a matte so I had to dip into this one so that's something to think about if you kind of need or want a matte there isn't one in there but such pretty shadows and again just a really nice pretty color story perfect for holiday perfect for summer I really like this little collection I will say the lip balm they sent across one of their tinted lip balms this is Laguna now this has gone straight in my handbag and I like it, but these don't have much color, if any. You can see there it's barely visible with a really built up swatch. Very, very sheer, very, very subtle. So I don't know that you need it. It's nice. Did I enjoy it? Yes, it's got in my handbag because it's a very easy going everyday lip balm, but it's not going to look any different to any other tinted lip balm that you already own because it just doesn't have much color. So I think that is probably an easy pass for most people. I mean, that whole collection really, I think we have everything in it already. It just depends whether you like it and whether you can see a place for it in your collection. I think in mine, it's probably gonna get a little lost. But an eyeshadow palette that did not get lost in my collection this month is this one from YSL. This is number 100 of their mini couture clutch collection. Oh, I absolutely love it. They feel so nice just when you're swatching them. They feel wet, creamy, smooth and silky. It's so flipping pretty. I absolutely love these shades. I love these cool tones. The whole palette just works so beautifully together to give you such an elegant, glorious, classic, cool toned look. I think it's so pretty. I love the packaging. Can't get enough of it. And again, actually very travel friendly. It's got some really solid packaging. It feels very safe to travel with. And it's nice and diddy as well. I think it's glorious. Please give us many, many more color stories, okay? There are not enough of them. I feel like that's the most special color story, other than maybe the blue one, which is probably a little too blue 
for me at least. Next up, this mascara from Shiseido. I used this also in my trying new makeup video and I really liked it. First impressions were good. I will say it hasn't really grown on me over the last like couple of weeks that I've been trying this. It's kind of fallen by the wayside a little as I kind of dip back into my other mascaras. It just doesn't quite compete with like my Charlotte Tilbury and my MAC Stack, my Benefit Roller Lash. Like this definitely do isn't challenging them. So I'm just not really continuing to use it that much. I liked it. It's a nice mascara but I have better more exciting ones I would say it's just not quite giving me the drama that those other three give me next let's talk about the color balm collection from Pat McGrath these little blush sticks first of all I was very pleasantly surprised by these I think they're really easy to use and work with very pretty they feel nice on the lips they perform beautifully on the cheeks very travel friendly very easy to use I have no complaints about them I really like that sort of juicy I really like that sort of juicy dewy glowy glorious cheek it just it gives you the juiciest cheeks and I really love that especially in the summer looks very fresh and healthy and popsicle-y you know yes I don't love the packaging it doesn't feel luxurious but like I mentioned before you know the price tag is much much lower than a lot of Pat McGrath launches a lot of Pat McGrath products so you know you're getting a little bit like what you paid for I don't mind it they're easy to store they're easy to travel with and it looks fine it just doesn't it doesn't feel luxurious like I understand what people mean when they are saying that but I think they're a really nice cream blush having said that if you get have a lot of cream blushes I don't know that this one would stand out you know they're not unique colors and it's not an especially unique formula I don't find they last incredibly well they don't wear incredibly well because they are a sort of you know they don't dry down or anything like that so they are one of those products that it isn't really going to wear that well but then again they're very easy to travel with and take in your handbag for a touch-up so they're either for you or they're not I think I will still use them occasionally but I also can't see me necessarily using them a lot or frequently as someone who's not a big cream or stick blush kind of girl but if you are let me know what you think down below now of course this little number came out along with those blush sticks and this is much more up my street I very much purchased this for the for review purposes like it's definitely not a color story that I would necessarily need myself review aside but oh the pink gets me every time I swatch it it's always so much prettier than I think it's going to be and this sort of taupey shade is such a perfect one and done shadow I've been using that shade a lot as like a one and done with a bit of bronzer or just with that buffed into the crease and I love it I think it's so much prettier than I expected it to be and is it mega unique no if if you have a lot of Pat McGrath if you've got like Mothership 5, 6, 7, 8 all of them <laughs> like I do then I think for sure that you probably have most of these shades but it's handy to have them in a quad and it's handier to travel with a quad so I think this is a beautiful pretty quad and if you don't have a lot of Pat McGrath eyeshadows and you don't already have this color story I don't think you'll be disappointed it's so pretty it exceeded my expectations and I just think it looks glorious on the lid very summer friendly as well I feel like it's a really summery color story and I love it next let's talk about this Tom Ford highlighter this is in the shade Oasis there is another shade in this formula this one I'm not a huge fan of it it's okay it's nice I feel like it needs a lot of working into the skin for me to enjoy it I feel like I have to really use a light hand and really buff it in otherwise it kind of sits on top of the skin it's a little too heavy formula wise and it's just a little too intense and metallic-y for me I think it kind of enhances my texture a little the color is a little off of my skin tone so it does kind of leave a bit of a colour is a lot of sort of visible sparkle in there which just isn't really my preference when it comes to a highlighter so not that it's necessarily a fail I think some people will love it just not me and I can't really see myself using it 
I think, you know, I have many highlighters that I prefer. So yeah, mm, I wish I loved it, but I don't. Next up, these little Dior backstage blushes that I picked up this month. I picked up two shades. We have Cherry and we have Rosewood, which is definitely my favorite. I haven't yet gone back for mahogany i don't know why i think it's like every swatch i see looks so different i can't make my mind up i think i really <laughs> want to get mahogany but i keep being put off because ev for every like three or four pictures or reviews i see of people using it and it looking gorgeous and like the perfect neutral blush then i see one where i'm like oh mm, and it puts me off and i keep going back and forth but the procrastinating about my own shopping list aside. I really enjoyed these. The reviews have been so mixed, it's crazy. I guess it all really just probably depends on your preferences for blush, what brush you're using, how you're using it, what products you're using it on top of. I've used the Rosewood shade because I really love it. It's so pretty, that's the one at the top. I have used that many times and I've never had an issue with it. I've used it with my Sonia G, you know, detail brush from the Lotus collection, which is my favorite blush brush. I love it. It's beautiful. It's very pretty. It's very easy to use. It goes on very naturally and builds up very nicely. It's got a nice subtle luminosity to it. They wear really nicely. They're very cute and tiddy. Easy to store, easy to travel with. I like the packaging I think it's cute and I have no complaints but I know that that's not been everyone's experience so vote down below what has been your experience is it good or terrible I saw Temptalia hated them they did very badly on Temptalia's blog so yeah it's an interesting one isn't it makeup is so weird and confusing and unhelpful most of the time. Next, let's talk about the blush I'm wearing today. This is the Hermes Rose Cuban, one of their luminous finish, the new formula of glowier blushes. I way prefer these to their matte blushes. This is such a pretty sheen, but it's like a smooth sheen, really nice, subtle, pretty, shade this was the only shade i was interested in that's my only complaint i feel like they're very limited on their colors in both of their blush collections you know it's like they're all kind of varying rose undertone shades i want something different give us like some real corals some real brights some neutral actual neutral shades i feel like they have a few shades pretending to be like disguised as neutral shades that in fact a rose again or they lean quite sort of peachy so i would love to see a, some more shades this i think is very pretty i think i'll get you know a decent amount of use out of it it's right up my street really very very glowy and pretty and easy to use and yeah definitely a winner for me definitely a, a winner over the matte formula which i think is just like pretty average and skippable. And Gucci also brought out new shades of their blushes, which are one of my favorite formulas ever. I've always loved these luminous blushes from Gucci. The packaging is like one of my favorite things ever. This is the shade Soft Red. I was on the fence again. They brought out a few new shades. None of them really screamed to me. And this one, I thought it was quite intimidating from like the pictures and the swatches and the fact that it had the word red in it. But you know, this is a very built up swatch and I think blended out, you can see it's actually really very, can, or can be really very subtle, pretty, fresh spring cheeks. It's so lovely. I've always loved the formula of these. They have like the smoothest glow. There is no visible glitter or shimmer that you can see even in a swatch, but it is all smooth luminosity. They're so pretty. I really love them. Very, very sophisticated, smooth glow to the cheeks. And I think this might be, mm, I was gonna say it might be my favorite of a shade, but I don't know. I think the apricot might pip it. Or oh, the rosy beige. Oh, it's too hard. I can't decide. I won't. Don't make me. Next up, Refa came out with a new size, should we say, of their eyelash curlers. Chase your husband around the house with these if he's annoying you, is my tip. Now, they previously had number 20R and they've now brought out 18R. I've had this for a little while now, 
and I go, I like both of them. I go back and forth. So essentially, 18R, it's, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you the difference on camera. You're just not going to be able to see. It's quite subtle. But 18R is narrower across width-wise, and it's got a deeper curve to it. So it's designed if you have maybe like a narrower eye shape or just, I don't know, a deeper or more curved lash line, it's going to hug your eyeball, <laughs> your eyelid. Hopefully it stays away from your eyeball altogether. It's going to hug your eyelid more closely. And I definitely find that I am able to get closer to my lash line when I use this. And also that it's more, like it feels like you've got them in there, but it's not painful. Sometimes larger curlers like pinch, you know, your eye skin. This one, you can get really close without it pinching, which I've really noticed about this. So I think the 18R might be my favorite. Please let me know if you've tried both of these and how you get on with which is your favorite for your eye shape. I think 18R is very clever. They also made them a bit sort of more substantial, a bit more hardy feeling in the hand, a bit chonkier, which I love. I just love how they listen to our feedback and give us what we want. <laughs> and more brands need to do that, okay. Next, let's talk about the Natasha Denona Yucca Palette. <sighs> I think you already know how I feel about this one. I think you probably already knew how I felt about this one before I even used it. Maybe even before I knew how I felt about it. I mean, look at her. She's glorious. I don't feel, and this is bold to say, but I'm gonna say it, we're among friends, it's a safe space. I don't think I'll ever hanker after or need a green khaki eyeshadow palette again. There I said it. I take it back immediately. But you know what I'm saying, I feel like this is the one I've been waiting for, maybe that we've all been waiting for. It's the one, the one that's not really missing anything, that's giving us options, that's giving us the formulas we needed, the performance, it's got the mattes, it's got the shimmers, it's got everything we could possibly need from this color story. That's the worst swatch I've ever done. But it's just got such a stunning mixture of formulas and colors. I've always said it, and I'll say it again, Natasha Denona is the queen of colour stories. Sometimes the formulas are not my favourite. Sometimes she goes with, you know, a more understated shimmer than I would love. Sometimes things don't work out. But that woman is such a genius. When it comes to colour stories and combinations in palettes, I think she's like supreme. You know, I feel like there are certain areas where, you know, Pat McGrath's shimmer and special shades she smashes it out of the park with those. You know, I feel like Charlotte Tilbury with packaging always coming in hot. Natasha Denona's like USP is her color stories. It's like she takes it from my mind and puts it in a palette. Maybe she's doing that. I should investigate. But I love everything about it. I don't think there's anything left to say. I love her more and more every day. I am using it a lot. I think it's actually very wearable. If you like this type of colour story, you can kind of go as light or as colourful, as dramatic or as understated as you like. The, the formulas in here, every single shadow, chef's kiss is what it is in every way. There's nothing left to say about it. It's amazing. I don't know. We need any more words, we'll just leave it at that. Now, Hourglass came out with two new shades of my favorite glosses this month, Rise and Sense. Rise and Sense. No, wait, I've lied. They came out with more shades than that, right? I just purchased two. <laughs> I'm so sorry, what's going on? So yes, I believe that they actually came out with more shades, but I just picked up the two sort of more neutral ones. So we have Scents that's a little more pinky and we have Rise that's a bit more of a neutral and Rise is the shade that I am wearing today. Yes, indeed. Now I've loved this formula for a long time. It's their glossy like plumping balm. So it has that sort of menthol tingly feeling and it gives you a glossy luscious pout i love them they're so comfortable they don't burn it's not too harsh you know that plumping feeling and i just think they're really easy going comfortable a really nice shine no stickiness they wear nicely for a gloss and i just really like them i think they're a winner i don't love that you can't twist it back down afterwards but i understand they're like a melting gloss so you just have to you know only twist them up 
teensy bit and everything will be fine. These shades, I will say if you have a lot of these, they're quite subtle and understated. Neither of them are immensely pigmented or have a huge amount of base color to them. So I think if you've got like five or six of these, you could pass on these new shades because I don't think they'll look hugely different on your lips to like the other shades that you have, but I'm enjoying them nonetheless. It's a formula that I love. I love her and I know her well. So there. Next up, I was sent the entire collection of BK Beauty lipsticks this month and what a treat it was. <sighs> that hour was a fun, let me tell you. But they released new shades. However, I have not tried any of these before and some of my absolute, in fact, I think my favorite shade is this one, Empower. <sighs> Do you see? the pigmented brightness and lusciousness of that. These are so comfy, so comfortable, very balmy, very hydrating and smooth on the lips. They're lovely, they have a lovely amount of shine. This is another one of my favorites, Kindness, which is a more sort of everyday shade. And then we have Confidence, which is a sort of more deep, like berry red shade. There are so many beautiful shades in here. What I would like is more richer nudes. I felt like I was missing like a deeper nude for my skin tone because this formula is lovely. This is my favorite. This, I mean, it's just delightful. What did we say she was called? Empower. Oh, it just empowers me looking at it. I love this brand. Their packaging is so nice. The lipsticks are a lovely formula. So yeah, thank you so much BK Beauty for sending me across these lippies because they're delightful. I mean, just the kind of lipstick that I, I love for, you know, spring and summer where it's hydrating and your lips feel nice and smooth and juicy, not necessarily super shiny, but uh, some luminosity, wear really nicely, lots of pretty colors, can't go wrong. And lastly, but by no means leastly, these new liquid lipsticks from Charlotte Tilbury. I can never remember what anything is called. Have you noticed? I have to check every time. Airbrush Flawless Lip Blur. So I picked up two shades, Honey Blur and Nude Blur. Honey Blur is my absolute favorite. I have only come to love these more. As I've worn them and got to know them, they have only grown on me. I've not noticed anything new that is a negative. They wear so well and they're so comfortable. They are absolutely in the running to become my all time favorite liquid lipstick formula. They do take a long time to dry down. So like 30 minutes, let's say, before they are like transfer proof. But that is what keeps, I think, the comfortability throughout the day. My lips aren't flaking off, they're not shriveling up, they're not dying, they're not trying to evacuate my face. They feel lovely, they're beautiful, they have a nice smooth sort of soft focus finish to them. I think they're lovely, I love everything about them. The packaging, it's Charlotte Tilbury, it's glorious, I love it. Really, really unexpected surprise because I didn't think I would like these and I flipping love them. So thank you Charlotte Tilbury, she's only gone and done it again. That lady, seriously. Have a word. Whew. So there you have it. That is everything that I tried in the month of June. Please let me know what your favorite product was that you tried in the month of June. Did I try it? Do I need to try it? Tell me in the comment section down below. I just had to go and check my calendar that was in fact June. <laughs> I never know what month it is. I'm not joking. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.